So pathology of abductor tendons is one of the most common causes of lateral thigh pain at the region of the greater trochanter and even lower, both in native and in prosthetic hips. It ranges from full tendinosis to complete tendon rupture, retraction, and fatty atrophy of the gluteal muscles. Greater trochanteric pain syndrome, which is the term that has been used so far, is more prevalent in women than in men, with a peak prevalence found between the fourth and sixth decade of life. It is often misdiagnosed as being trochanteric bursitis, and I say misdiagnosed because nowadays with the advent of MRI and high-performance ultrasonography, we can observe tendinous problems of the abductors without having a borsal irritation. Now, some anatomical uh, reminders. In the red, you find the attachments of the gluteus minimus. So A is the attachment of, on the anterior facet of the trochanter. B is the capsular attachment of the minimus. E is what we call the bold spot. So there's nothing attached over there. And D and C are the two bundles of the gluteus medius that attach on the greater trochanter. So you can imagine that if the gluteus medius comes from anterior to posterior, the E section, the bold spot area, can play a role of irritation of the tendon and hence rupture at this area of the tendon. So the rupture is concerned most often the anterior bundle of the gluteus medius and the anterior bundle of the gluteus minimus that are compressed against this bold area and can be poorly vascularized. Now let's get some epidemiology. Half of the patients suffering from greater trochanteric pain syndrome demonstrate gluteal tendinosis or ruptures. So there are a lot of patients that have been mistreated so far. The rate of ruptures and tendinosis increases with age and the incidence raises from 10% to patients lower than 60 years old to 50% on patients over the age of 70. That means that the old 70-year-old lady coming into your office and complaining of ongoing pain on the lateral part of, the, of her greater trochanter has a 50% chance of having a tendinous problem. Now, why do these problems happen? So it's many attributed to alter lower limb biomechanics with age, especially in the setting of hip osteoarthritis. So a lot of patients that you will be seeing for OA have a concomitant tendinous problem. Ruptures of the tendons have been reported in up to 20% of patients suffering from OA and 25% of patients undergoing hip arthroplasty for end-stage arthritis. And these reports come from intraoperative findings. So surgeons going in either through a lateral or posterior approach and observing that there was a tendinous rupture on site. Now the clinical scenarios, the rotator cuff of the hip from atraumatic chronic tears of the anterior part of the gluteus medius is one option. Post THA through a transgluteal approach, that's an iatrogenic tear. Or THA in abductor sparing approaches, for example, anterior approaches, that is concomitant, highlighting the role of altered hip mechanics in the tear pathogenesis. And when we extrapolate this to shoulders with cuff tear arthropathies, we can wonder whether the tear created the arthritis or the arthritis the tear. And that's maybe a subject of discussion later on. Now, both abductor fatigue and inflammatory process seen in patients with total hip arthroplasty, including excessive wear and osteolysis, and especially metallosis, can lead to excessive abductor tendon damage, such in cases of ALTR, rendering direct repair impossible and possibly necessitating more complex reconstructive options. So lateral thigh pain aggravated by lying on the affected limb, walking or climbing stairs and limping. Tenderness over the side of abductor insertion, superior and lateral facets of the greater trochanter. Try thinking about the anatomy of insertion of the tendons. Anterior groin pain is less common Probably, if there is one, it is associated with some degenerative process in the joint. 
clinical examination, patient demonstrates a slight to moderate limping, as you would see on this first video. A positive Trendelenburg sign often indicates abductor tendon tears, and there is external rotation during abduction with abductor weakness. Standard radiographs might show an irregular trochanter. This irregular trochanter that has been called enthesopathy has a 90% correlation with tendon rupture. If these little, if these little osteophytes are more than two to three millimeters, there can be a rupture there in 90% of cases. Now the gold standard today is MRI. The MRI gives you information both on the anatomy and pathology of abductor muscles and tendons. It is highly sensitive and specific to predict Bluetooth medius tendon tears. We can use Mars or Maverick sequences to detect these tears even in a prosthetic setting. And what is very important, you get information regarding the size and shape of the gluteal muscles and tendons, tendinosis, partial or complete tendon defects, and very important, fat infiltration of the muscles. Because as you will see, this fat infiltration stage will be able to predict failure of some treatment options. How do you treat these patients? I would say start with a conservative treatment with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, rest and physio. Infiltrations, there's a lot to discuss about it because you might be doing more harm than good. Remember Achilles tendinopathy, infiltrations, the result is rupture. So if you have a tendinopathy of the glutei, I would say infiltrations might not be a good idea. Surgical treatment, in case of failure of conservative treatment, it is mandated in cases of full or partial gluteal tendon ruptures that are non-responsive to conservative treatment eliciting pain and disability to the patient. So don't treat MRIs, treat patients. The goal of surgical treatment is to preserve function and of course, reduce pain. Now, surgical techniques will vary on functional or not gluteal muscles and also will vary on tendinous damage. Is it a clear tear or is it a degenerative tear as you see on the upper left? Is the muscle still alive or is it highly degenerative, uh, such as Kobe beef infiltrated with fat? And according to the stage of these damage, you will see this little decisional plan. You have different options to treat. Direct open repair using bone tunnels and suture anchors, of course, is the best treatment you can offer to your patient, but will only be feasible with low degenerative stages. So Kutaye one or two with a defect that is less than three centimeters, a good tendon, or you have to augment it. So, and of course, good muscle. On the right part of the screen, you see these microfractures on the lateral part of the greater trochanter. There's a tendency to use more and more of these as they will increase the blood flow to the insertion site. Reconstruction of chronic end-stage tears using muscle transfer. There have been different techniques published. In our article, we cover one of them uh, that I have authored. So the vastus uh, lateralis and gluteal, uh, gluteus maximus flap transfer. It's not a complicated technique. It's an orthotopic uh, technique. So you don't need huge incisions as with the vastus lateralis technique and gives very good results. So tips and tricks, do not reinsert neurologically non-intact muscles or fatty infiltrated muscles, it will not work. Avoid aggressive de debridement in cases of severe tendinosis to preserve maximal tendon length and width. And of course, don't remove excess bone from the area of reinsertion because you are risking weakening of bone adjacent to anchor holes and hence iatrogenic fractures. And of course, when you don't have the option of reinserting the gluteus medius and minimus, think about tendon transfers. For those of you who have already registered, I will be very happy to see you in Paris. Those who are thinking about it, it's about time to register. Thank you all.